You need to hear this. Everybody <laughs> need to gather around for this one. This is a very special rendition. I wasn't saying you specifically, my brother. I was talking to us as a community, as a whole, as a black community, as a market, as a record label, staff, and a company. Yeah. Because this is breaking news and some new information hot off the press that may save somebody's life. Yeah. We got the book right here. It's not complicated. It's not. But you're making it hard. Mm. Now I had to go call in a specialist for what I've been seeing on the internet. All this back and forth and arguing and on these podcasts and stuff. Somebody got to make some sense <laughs> of all this. And I think I found the right person to do it. Miss Alicia Price. Yes. Now before I tell you what she does, I'm just gonna let you know that I'm gonna let her tell you what she does first, because I know. But I think you need to hear it from her, and then I'll follow up with that. Yes, thank you. They're all yours. Thank you for having me. I am your favorite co-parenting coach. Say it one more time. I am your favorite co-parenting coach. What's a co coach? I am a co-parenting coach and expert. I work with single parents and divorced parents, also those who have never been married, okay. to figure out how do they cooperatively co-parent? How do you work together as parents to raise your children? That's a damn good question. Yes. So how do you do it? Man, you shut the fuck up. First, is that in the book? What <laughs> you mean? shut is the fuck the up. What page is that on in the book? <laughs> no, we keep it all the way real. Like, really, it's an adult thing. Uh, kids are absolutely not the problem. Adults need to learn how to work together. And it all starts with communication. So part of communicating is listening. And if you're talking, you can't be listening. So I like to work with parents so that they're not arguing in front of their children and they can cooperate. So this is like a workbook. Yes, yes, oh, it's a you guide. you even got it split up where the daddy can say his part and then she can write her part back. Oh, so they could just like kind of pass it. You be like, when you drop the kids, I'm like, all right, y'all say it, my little boy. Well, this book in particular is for mothers to work through what they have to navigate as it relates to co-parenting and healing from the relationship. But fathers can also gain a lot from the tools in the book. And um, you mentioned kind of the passing it back and forth, and we do some activities in the coaching um, in terms of kind of sharing journals and being able to really articulate what it is that you're feeling. Yeah. Um, so, so you got to talk work. about your feelings. You have to. You have to. You have to. <sighs> it's deep. It's deep. Co-parenting is um, something that also married couples do. If you're cohabitating, you're still co-parenting. And a lot of times we get a bad rap for, you know, if you're a single mother or a single father and you need to co-parent, people think that it's automatically drama. There's something wrong. Um, but we need to learn how to actually hear each other in terms of what parenting looks like. And if we want to break cycles of what single parent households look like and, um, you know, when did you the get Maury it? Povich show. When did you get it? Like, when did it make sense to you? Well, you like, you know, up. I have, so we were at my son's uh, conferences for, in fifth grade, and I remember the teacher <laughs> saying to us, um, he didn't know until my son stood up and read an essay in class that he didn't live with both his mom and his dad. And it just like clicked for me. I was like, wow, like if they, the school didn't recognize that he wasn't living with both of us, then we made it. Like we made it, we did it. Um, and that was because our communication was seamless. They could tell his dad something that I also knew, and we showed up as a collective, as a team for our son, although we weren't living in the same household. And um, that's essential to raising our children to be whole, to be healed, to be healthy, you know, to not be out here in the streets and in a bunch of drama. We need fathers to be present 
and we need mothers to um, accept them. <laughs> keep going. Just keep going. Say, say I mean, what needs it, to be that's said. It, that's say it. Say what needs to be said. Um, you got this. You know, there's a lot of toxic behavior that's happening, especially in the black community. You know, we, we're calling our babies my baby instead of our child. Um, and a lot of women are taking a lot of ownership on that role of being a mother instead of really just, you know, recognizing it takes a village. You don't have to do it by yourself. There are a lot of men I've, I've noticed in my work who really want to be present. They want to be there. They want to understand what's going on with the mothers, but they just don't know how to communicate sometimes. Um, and if the relationship has been toxic, who do you go to? You know, sometimes you, you can't go to your mom because your mom is like, I don't like the heifer either, right? So you got to reach out, like <laughs> you know, and you got to get support from a neutral uh, party. And so at the Price Dynamic, um, which is my organization, we provide co-parenting coaching, we provide family mediation, we provide supervised visitation for parents who uh, don't have custody. So that way you have a safe and neutral environment to start to work on some of these uh, skills and tools. Mm. How can they contact you and yes. get some so, of this info? AliciaPrice.com, also thepricedynamic.com, um, and all of the products, book, cards, everything is available on the Tell website. Tell me about the cards. So the cards um, come from actually, I don't know how much you know about the you know, um, the co-parenting dynamic. I'm not I sure. I know a lot about it. All right. I'm actually so, an expert at it. Okay. So when we think we know what the other party is going to say, here's some actual, the cards that are open. But when we think we know what the other person is going to say, we can't listen, right? So if you're trying to communicate with your co-parent, these cards serve as a purpose or as a tool for having a, a conversation or making decisions as a team without one person taking over or the authority. So it eliminates all the yelling. It eliminates you assuming you know what the other person is going to say. And they're prompts that really help you to walk through how to make decisions and set rules uh, for your children. And what, what is your inner voice telling you about this decision? One of my favorite cards, hands down, trips everybody up, is what would you tell another family about, you know, uh, this particular situation or what kind of, you know, advice would you give another family? Are you supposed to shuffle these? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because there was a bunch of safety cards in there. Yeah, the so the safety cards, each family member gets a safety card. Oh, and you passed these out. Yeah, the green cards are the safety cards. So, like, your children actually can get them, and they can have a voice in the conversation, Ooh, and everybody the takes turns. Ooh, you need to win the argument right here. <laughs> Nobody can interrupt me while I'm talking. <laughs> you heard what the lady said. I got the card. <laughs> Big joker. <laughs> you know, and it gives people, gives, gives them some tools, right? Because, you know, a lot of times we get stuck in the ways that we've learned to communicate, which can be toxic. And we're all about breaking generational curses around here. We need to do things different and we need to support our children and, and show them healthy relationships. So the cards definitely help with that. These babies need us. Yes, they do. Yep. And you said you're a co-parenting expert yourself. Huh? I am. I got some, whatever you need from me, I can let you know. Right on. What it is from, I'm somebody's baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you, if you ever need some insight from somebody's baby daddy that's yes. active in the field. Yes. Still out here. Yep. Hit me. I'm, I'm going to do that. I ain't going to tell you what I heard. I'm going to tell you what I know. I am absolutely going to do that. That's the, this is the hardest job I have ever had. Parenting, right? Uh-uh. It's not just parent. I told you being somebody's baby daddy. I am a statistic. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it is difficult. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do the right thing, and get this stigma off me and change the perception of yep. baby daddies. Yep, yep. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It really doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. You we make things to, harder. You just have to, look, the trick to being a baby daddy is just let her say that shit she's saying and then have your backup plan already ready because you know that shit ain't going to work. Like, All right, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to pick the birthday cake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. <laughs> and then... When that, but, but how did I start? What did I say? What what, what you supposed to do? You you supposed, right? Express your feelings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's the thing about it. Men know. They do. Men they know. do. But it is difficult, it, especially in my work. We see a lot of men who 
are doing supervised parenting time, which is really hard, right? right. To you know, only be able to see your child while somebody is, is observing that. That ain't even how parenting works. Right, right. And so we're able to do a lot more support and coaching in that space. And then it also helps, of course, by representation matters. You know, when you walk into an organization and there are black folks there, and they understand what you're talking about and can support you through, you know, uh, kind of that court process too. Yeah. Um, which is... You don't want that process. I, right. I didn't even know you was going to bring that process up. Yeah. You don't want those problems, man. Get you some of these cards See? And, and do your thing. Because going to court is... Woo. Listen, coaching, family mediation, and utilizing uh, the supports that you have in your community is way cheaper. Yeah, then man. the court, then the lawyers, and all that goes with that, way cheaper. Yeah. And if you need further instructions, just talk to some people who got a lot of kids. <laughs> I'm telling you, that'll save you so much stress. Yeah. People, I'm not, not like three, four, like, like seven, eight, nine, eleven, a lot. You know somebody. Eleven kids. Now, those people got the best type of advice. Yeah, that's common. Every black neighborhood got one person that got way too many kids. Yeah. And they're going to have the best advice. Oh, yeah. They've done it all. <laughs> they got so much experience to draw from. Now, my youngest son, Daddy, he good. <laughs> my middle two, they don't know him. And my oldest... Right. They mm, run the gamut. They, they know every scenario. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, I can, I can understand that. That yeah, is true. That's why I talk to him. That is true. <laughs> I know a dude who got six baby mamas. Yeah, I I know quite a few that got more than that. Yeah, six, and I, he was just letting me know that his favorite one, the troublesome one, <laughs> the neutral one. And that's that is so real. It is so real. There's there's a label, right? And you had the other thing that I've learned in this work too is a lot of the times women don't recognize their power. They act a lot of the times as kind of this victim in the scenario, instead of recognizing that um, we kind of run shit, or we have the ability to. Oh, I thought you was about to take some accountability. I was like, we done it. <laughs> we done it. We have found the one lady that's going to hold herself accountable. I told you all I was cold. <laughs> uh, but you do like, nope, uh, we got the power. <laughs> It's, it ain't our fault. But no, I mean, <laughs> literally, it's like you can dictate how that relationship will be. Right. Because you men are defined to you a lot of the time. So if you recognize that power and you use it for the good of your children, it doesn't have to be complicated. And I think um, through coaching, a lot of people are able to recognize that. I think things could go a whole lot smoother if people learn some better words to talk to each other. That with. is very true. Better word selection. Yep. A little more patience. Patience. Listen. Really listen. Not listen to have a rebuttal, but listen to, to truly, um, and also not to understand all the time. You might not understand everything a person is saying, but to um, actually be able to reflect what they're saying is important. Yeah. You know? But, um... Yeah, co-parenting is it. We've been talking about it a lot. It's like a, it's a buzzword. We're talking more and more about what co-parenting is. And um, I think it's important that people recognize that there's ways to get support around it without avoiding it and then ending up at court. Are you a parent? I am. I have a 19-year-old. Just one? Yep, just one. Man, you're supposed to have a bunch of kids. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You ain't having no more? No. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. That is a big age gap. Though. Yeah, it's over. 20 years. <laughs> Come get your little brother. I can't. No, nope. <laughs> it's over with. It's over. Yeah. Well, I want to let you know that what you're doing for the community is great, and I hope you help everybody. I hope so, too. Because somebody, somebody going to have to make some sense of all yep. this. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, it's not complicated. It's all in about, you know, the choices. That's very true. And just to be heard, you know, when we're in the coaching space, you're able to really sit with somebody and support them through what they're feeling, what they're thinking. Um, it really, truly helps. And in coaching, we're not there to diagnose you. So it's very different than what people think traditionally therapy is, right? Guess, it's I'm an opportunity 
Let me ask some hypothetical yeah. questions since I got you in here. <laughs> what would you tell somebody who has to co-parent with somebody who just stupid? Just flat out stupid. Yeah. Logical, you know, there's people who can't make logical mm -hmm. decisions. They mm -hmm. make emotional ones, but Very emotional. not logical ones. Yeah. So we get that a lot. And what I like to tell people is sometimes co-parenting might not even be for you. And you need to recognize who you can co-parent with while you can. Now so that's your village, some real advice right there. yeah, your village is accessible. Sometimes we're forcing, you know, a circle into a square. Literally. Yeah. And you might need to parallel parent with that person. Sometimes there's, you know, domestic violence in play. Sometimes you got, you know, an extreme narcissist that you just can't talk sense into that person. So instead of trying to force that situation, figure out who in your family can help you in a co-parenting dynamic. And Use your resources. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's okay if you can't co-parent. You know, you don't have to force that. Um, but especially in the black community, it takes a village and we know that we understand that there's always a grandma There's you know aunts and uncles that are around and people are willing to step up and support you with your children And you just need to be you know mindful about saying like this is how I need you um, But I don't recommend people try to co-parent with somebody who's stupid. It's a waste of time It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. You said it so much nicer than me <laughs> Oh, I knew you was going to put it right, because when I say it, they, they get offended when I say it. Some people just stupid. Yeah. And, and well, we, we see it a lot. Yeah. You know? We have any questions from the floor? Anybody need help co-parenting? <laughs> any co-parents in here today? Nobody? <laughs> I'm the only one with, with a child today. All right. <laughs> I see how it is. Told you I was... I was um, Somebody's baby daddy you, earlier. You're you leading the pack. Hell yeah. That's how we do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to take my cards. Right on. I can't wait to pass these out. They're, and it's really a good tool, though. It really so is. So you get the whole family together and you give everybody like four cards? You get the whole family together and you go through the deck one at a time. So the safety cards go to each person for their hand. And then you draw them one by one and read out what the question is. And then everybody goes around and answers. So say, for instance, you're looking at, you know, how do we set bedtime for your child? And that's an issue. Or um, setting curfew could be an issue. When I created these cards, what we were trying to figure out in our family was allowing my son to uh, fly um, by himself. How old was he? He was... I think 16. Oh, hell yeah. He would have been flying yeah. by Yeah, and he was going off to a um, Berkeley um, uh, college uh, music for the summer. Yeah, get him and out of here. And I was like, we're trying to figure out who's going to ride on the plane with him one way and the other way. And he was like, I just want to go by myself. Yeah. So we were both like, okay, like, let's, let's talk this through. Let's figure it out. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. And he did. And once we went through this process, because we weren't giving him a voice, yeah, 16 you know, when you black is really, you really listen. 21. <laughs> you know black Don't listen. Age Don't different. tell him that. Man. Because he's 19 now, like so how have, old is he? Everybody who watching this show, <laughs> act like you haven't had some decent breakfast cooked by a six-year-old. <laughs> you laugh because you know it's true. Black kids be advanced. I, I was I was one of them black kids. Exactly. I was You've one been of them black since kids. Since you was five, six years I old. Ha I have. Exactly. I have. See? That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, we sat as a, as a family to, you know, kind of to, to work it through. And then I thought, well, the steps that we're taking to give him a voice, to have him be a part of the way we make decisions that relate to him. Right. Other people should be doing the same thing, you know. Um, and the more that you involve your child, the more that you take your own feelings out of the equation. And that helps you to show up better as a co-parent. Are you listening? <laughs> you might need to shuffle through these cards a little bit. There's some good ones in here, too, bro. How might the decision hurt someone else, J.O.N.? Yeah. Because we don't think about all of that kind of stuff. Sometimes, you know, we just repeating what we've seen, which a lot of times is a lot of yelling, 
A lot you of cussing. Been real petty on these cards. That's what I'm saying. Like just to spice it up, little razzle dazzle. Your daddy ugly as hell. <laughs> And that's gonna make it complicated. Yeah, just for a little razzle dazzle. Well, that'll be Ask that'll be the. about their birthday money. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the family fun edition. <laughs> well, we gonna we gonna partner. <laughs> now those would be funny though. Ask your mama, can I have some of the child support back? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, look, I appreciate you coming through here. I blessing thank you me, for having me. Putting me up on some co-parenting game. Anybody can use that. Yes. What do you tell the step parents? You know, I tell the step parents to follow the lead of the biological parent. You mm. know, like if you are with a parent who doesn't feel like they can advocate for themselves, that they can speak up, you still need to be kind of deferring to them and, and following their lead because you're not the parent. Um, until you can build a relationship with their co-parent, you need to fall back because it will definitely make it complicated. And, and it, it can offend the children that are involved, too. I got a book idea for you. Let's have it. I'm just throw, I like to throw ideas out. I people. love it. Do a book called Other People's Kids. Other People's Kids. I like that. The so Step Parent Edition, that. yep. Other People's Kids. Other People's Kids. You need to do a whole chapter. Just shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> chapter six. You all in them folks' house. Because literally, I mean, I see so many step parents chapter 13. that make things you harder. Ain't nothing. See? Look, you don't know. They wrote do the make book. it harder. They make it hard. They do. Especially, I say this one too. Especially in my personal experience, the girlfriend who don't get along with her baby dad. Oh, they don't sabotage But everything. they want, so they want their boyfriend and not get along with his baby mom. Oh, that's a, that's a doozy. Yeah. Yeah. We see it all. They always be funny looking too, don't they? <laughs> Tell the truth. It's always the most funny looking ones. It ain't never that the, is very it, it's true. always the funny that looking That is very one. true. In my experience, that is very true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just how it go though. Men fall in love with a lot of fun looking women. <laughs> For real, we do. We always it's, look at some of your older homeboy. <laughs> you ever see some a couple together and you just look and be like, "What the fuck? Like, how did like that work? <laughs> what do they have in common, dude? I'll I be in Walmart. There, them some strange couples in there. Strange ass couples. It in there. definitely. That's a whole nother episode. They learn how to come uh, co-parent though. It's not yeah. complicated. Right. At least it don't have to be. Drop the website again. Yes, aliciaprice.com or thepricedynamic.com. Okay. Yes. And that's Alicia. That's A L Y E S H A. No. A L Y S S H A. -S -S -A. -S -A. No, nope, that's All right, S. Bet. Well. <laughs> there you have it, folks. There you have it. <laughs> Zoom in on it. It looked like an E to me. It's, it's an S. Ain't no E in there. No See, e. you would have went to somebody else's website. Ain't no trouble. <laughs> what would have popped up? J-O-N, the black market is open.